Well, hello everyone. My name is Will Bold. I'm one of the pastors here at Mandarin United Methodist Church. And we are so glad that you are joining us in this time of worship. We are glad that you are connecting with us digitally and virtually, wherever you might find yourself. If you haven't already done so, we're going to invite you to look into the description of this video, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, and click the link that says check in. We'd love to connect with you, get to know a little bit about you. Um, if you have a prayer request or a concern that you'd like lifted up or want us to be in prayer for throughout the week, um, that's also the space that you can put that in. Um, so click on that check in link and we'd love to get to know you and uh, be in prayer for you. Secondly, right below that is the link to give. So in response to all that God has given to us in all of the world that we have, the air that we breathe, the clothes we wear, the family we have, it is all a gift. So we give in response to what God has given to us. So you can click on that link, give, and give any time throughout the service in response because God is the giver of all that we have. A couple of announcements before we get into our time of worship. Um, first off, we have three new small groups that have started or is in the process of getting started. We've got a walking small group, we have a beach devotional a fellowship small group, and a coffee shop devotional slash small group, um, all in Jacksonville or St. John's County. And if you want to be a part of a small group, connect with people outside, because um, we know it's really, really important to connect with people now um, more than ever. Um, we'd love to connect with you um, and have you connect with these small groups. Um, you can find more information on the website, or you can look through the buzz, which gives your, the people that you would contact for each small group, or you can con contact Andrea Verticapa, who is our congregational connector, and she can point you in the right direction to be a part of those small groups that meet weekly. And then finally, we have our guest preacher today is Derek Scott. Derek Scott is the Campus City Wesley Executive Director um, here in Northeast Florida. Um, CCW is what they call it. Um, and CCW is our Campus City Wesley, uh, our Wesley Fellowship College Age Ministry that we have for all of Northeast Florida and spans different campuses and even an online campus. And uh, Derek is, many of you have probably heard Derek before, whether it be here at Mandarin or somewhere else. Um, Derek is just, he is such a good speaker, such a good preacher, such a good leader, um, a really good friend, and uh, just such an honest, transparent, vulnerable, wise, intelligent human being. Um, so I am so glad that he agreed to uh, be our guest preacher for this week. And uh, I'm going to be talking to him the following week about this sermon that he's going to preach. I haven't listened to it yet. Um, so I just want to let you know that we'll have our midweek conversation with him next week as well, and that'll be aired on Thursday. But uh, Derek, we say thank you. Thank you for giving your time, for your words, and what God has placed upon your heart, and uh, what the Spirit has led for you to speak to us today. So with those announcements being said, let's begin our time with prayer. Gracious, loving, and holy God, we thank you for this time for this ability to gather even digitally to experience you and to hear your spirit. So inspire us in this time of worship as we sing, as we pray, as we hear your words spoken to us. Let us feel your spirit. Amen.
God of life, whose love enfolds us and spirit fills us, we praise your holy name. God of joy, whose sunrise awakes us and sunset amazes us, we praise your holy name. God of hope, whose promise sustains us and power upholds us, we praise your holy name. God of love, whose patience humbles us and touch can heal us, we praise your holy name. God of peace, who breaks down barriers and walls that divide us, we praise your holy name. God of eternity, who has always loved us and by grace has saved us, we praise your holy name. God of all ages, thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for your forgiveness, your wisdom, and your grace. Let us join together in the words that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power of glory forever. Amen. Hey Mandarin, it's good to be with you all this morning. My name is Derek Scott III. I'm the director of Campus to City Wesley Foundation. We represent the United Methodist Church on the campuses of Northeast Florida and the college students who are on those campuses, but quite honestly, all over the place right now. Um, and I've given that introduction many times. I love you all at Mandarin and just so, so grateful for you and just praying for you in this moment, in this season. I wish that we could be together, um, but grateful for technology that allows us to still be in community. When uh, Will asked me um, if I would uh, be a part of today's worship service, I, I, was, I jumped at it and he told me that I could preach on anything that I wanted to, which is kind of dangerous uh, to tell me that I can preach on whatever I want to preach on. But I really started thinking about uh, sort of CCW and, and this partnership that we have. I mean, CCW exists in many ways because of the investment that Mandarin has made um, over many years. We're so grateful for the partnership that we have with you all. Um, but this 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 season has been weird, and it's weird for all of us, right? Like doing ministry in the age of COVID, um, doing church in the age of COVID. I mean, it's just like there's no playbook for it, and there's definitely no playbook uh, for doing campus ministry in the age of COVID. And so as I've been thinking about the things that I need to say to our students, the messages that I need to bring, we're doing online worship on Sundays as well and finding new and different ways to do ministry with physical distancing. And I really have felt a burden to help our students really ground themselves in mindsets and ideas that are going to really help them persevere in this season. And so the next series of talks that I'm going to give to our students is called Grounded. And it really is about this idea of being grounded in very specific mindsets. And I thought this morning it might be good if I just brought some of that to you, sort of as a give you a bit of an introduction to what I'm going to preach to those students. And maybe this might be helpful for you, but also kind of give you some insight into the ways that I think about preaching to our students, the ideas that I'm, I'm using sort of to bring messages to them. And so for me, it always starts with scripture. It always starts with these words that we've been given, these God-breathed words that continue to resonate for us as the people of God. And so I just wanna read a little bit here from Ephesians chapter three. And I just say, cause I have to, it's my favorite book in the New Testament. And I really wanna invite you to just later on today, just grab a choice beverage and just sit with the entire book of Ephesians. Read it in one sitting, cause there's just so much good going on in this, in this, in this book, this letter to the Ephesians. I'm just gonna read a little bit of it, but if I really had time, we just kind of cruise through the whole thing. We won't do that today. I'm gonna start at chapter three, starting at verse 14. Hear these words this morning. This is Paul speaking. This is why I kneel before the Father. Every ethnic group in heaven or on earth is recognized by him. I ask that he will strengthen you and your inner selves for the riches from the riches of his glory through the spirit. I ask that Christ will live in your hearts through faith as a result of having strong roots in love. I ask that you'll have the power to grasp love's width and length, height and depth together with all believers. I ask that you'll know the love of Christ that is beyond knowledge so that you will be filled 
entirely with the fullness of God. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, I love this passage of scripture. I love the whole book. You should sit down and read it in one sitting. But I love this passage here. It's actually a passage that um, that I use in praying for my students. You know, I often don't know what to pray for my students. And I know that you probably have those moments with your kids, your grandkids, the young adults in your lives. And, and within these words that I just read um, sort of contains the words that I use to pray for my students. And I often will just pray, Father, give them the riches of your glory. Strengthen them by the power of your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ dwelling in their hearts so that they will know the fullness of your love. Let them know the height, the depth, the width, and the length of your love so that they can discern your will for them. And I pray that regularly. Like Paul, I bow my knees and I pray for these individuals, these young adults, and I specifically want to see that they would be grounded in love. That's what we read in this text. In this translation, it's strong roots in love. Other translations, grounded, rooted and grounded in love. And this is, this is the whole point of the grounded series that I'm going to bring to them. So there's just four ideas that I, I intend to put in front of them. And I'll tell you some of the reasons why I want to put these ideas in front of them. But again, the whole point is that I really do believe that the best thing that I can do for these young adults is give them tools to really ground themselves in mindsets, ideas, and perspectives that will carry them through the seasons of their lives. So, one of the images that I'll be using in this series that I'm going to preach over the next few weeks is the image of a plant. Now, if I was on my game today, I would have brought this plant here and like put it in front of you. I've actually become a bit of a plant dad, um, if that's a thing. Um, I've got a few succulents in my house and some friends have given me some plants as well. And and I've, I've never really owned a lot of plants. I've always been sort of afraid if I could keep them alive. But um, I've been doing this plant dad thing since April and, and it's kind of working out well. Um, and so as I really started reflecting on this series and reflecting on some of the plants in my house, that's sort of the image that I was using in this idea of grounded. So the first thing I thought about was the soil and how important the soil is to gardening, how important the soil is to your plants, all of that. And some of you, you know a whole lot more about planting and gardening than I ever will. But, um, you know, I just was thinking I had to repot one of my plants uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I went and bought this soil, and I was sort of looking at, you know, just different options that I had. And, and here's the thing that I realized, like, I, I think about how when we plant things in the soil, it's because there is a purpose for those plants. Now maybe the purpose is just aesthetic in the house, right? But sometimes we plant because it's gonna be food. We plant because we hope for shelter. We plant um, because uh, we're thinking about other, other, other beings, animals even around us. And that's one of the mindsets that I hope to really bring to our students that God has placed us in this world for a reason that there is meaning in our lives. And that's the first idea that I hope that our students might ground their lives in, that they are loved deeply by God. And what would it look like if our students grew deep roots in the idea that their life is not meaningless, that they have a purpose, that their lives matter. This is so important, right? Like this is where we start in this conversation about being grounded for the life ahead. When I think about uh, the, the lack of self-worth that so many of our students have, the, the, the fear that their lives don't matter, that they're in school, but they don't know why they're in school. Like this is where we've got to help them. And, and my job as a campus minister is to help them grow deep roots in this idea, this deeply biblical idea that they are loved by God, that there is a hope, that there is a future for them, that their life is not meaningless, but actually they are here for a purpose. Grounding their lives in that truth is, is more than words, right? And yet words become really important. The words of affirmation that we say over our young adults, the words of encouragement that we speak into them. You know, I often remind my students that everybody needs encouragement. 
everybody needs to know that they're, they're at least headed in the right direction or, or you can see these little bits and pieces of their lives that, that are signs that God's at work. And so the first message that I plan to bring is really going to be related to them planting their lives deep in the idea that they have been created out of God's love with good purpose, good intention. And my hope is that by preaching that message that it may speak to students who might be dealing with suicide, students that might be dealing with self-harm, even students that find themselves in, in intimate partner relationships that are turning violent and they're staying in it because they, they think it's the best that they can do. They're never going to find anyone else to love them, so they might as well just settle for someone that is this, not treating them at a level that their dignity requires. My hope is that I would help our students ground their lives, dig deep roots in the fact that they have a purpose, that their lives have meaning. The next sermon, I think, is going to be on, on their relationship with God specifically and directly. This is where I think about the sun. Um, I, I have had a really interesting time trying to get my plants around the house and, and trying to get them in a place where, like, the sun is really going to hit them because clearly plants need sun, right? Plants need this energy that's not, like, inside of them, energy coming from someplace else to help them grow and to help them to sort of dig those roots, right, and to really— um, and, and this is where I'm going to have to learn a whole lot more about planting and gardening, right? To talk about this with some kind of intelligence. Um, but I think about that as a great image about our relationship with God. You know, it's one thing to talk about planting our roots sort of deep in this idea that we have meaning. And you can kind of do that on your own, I think. I think that there's a sense that you can uh, decide that you're going to find your purpose and dig into your, your own life's meaning. But there is energy, there is nurture, there is direction that can only come from outside of us. I would even dare say, in the image of the sun, outside of this world. And that is our relationship with Jesus. That is the, the sun, S-O-N, if you will, shining God's light on us and nurturing us, helping us dig deep roots in God's love, God's love for humanity and God's love for who we are as the church. This is where scripture comes into play, right? And prayer and worship and meditation. This is where we start asking questions of our students, a question that we ask our students all the time. What's the last thing you heard God say to you? There's um, a pastor out in California named Erin McManus, and he said years ago, and it was a really challenging statement, he said, you can't live a single day as a follower of Jesus without hearing his voice. And he's sort of making this large sort of embellished statement, but what he was really trying to get at is that our expectations should be close relationship with Jesus to the point that we hear him and feel him and experience him. And so what does it look like for our students as they're grounding their lives in the fact that they've been created from love, that they've been created with good intention, created and their lives have meaning, what does it then mean for them to plant their lives deeply in the idea that their relationship with Jesus is essential? That their relationship with Jesus is the nurturing that is going to help them plant those deep roots. It's gonna help them grow and be strong as individuals in this world. So that's, that's, I mean, so much of my job <laughs> is inviting students into a deeper, ever-evolving relationship with Jesus, where we often say to our students, we, you know, we'll tell them everything that's available to them, but ultimately, we want them to do the thing that Jesus tells them to do. When we're talking about being grounded, we're talking about being grounded in a meaningful life. We're talking about being grounded then in a relationship with Jesus. And then we're talking about being grounded in, in community, being grounded in a community that, mat that, that, that wants to tell you that you matter. 
You know, I, 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 this is where um, being in a church community is really important. And in this season of campus ministry, it's a point that um, it really becomes important that we surround these young adults um, with as many people as possible. This is why we can't just sort of send sort of text messages all the time, but we've got to be on the ground. We've got to have conversations with them. We've got to ask them, how is it with your soul on a regular basis? This is also where we encourage them to make sure they have a multiplicity of relationships. This is where we talk to them about making sure they've got mentors in their lives and, and pastors in their lives and friends that, that they've, they've got folks in their world so they're not living their lives isolated. So what does it mean for our students to ground themselves in the community? And when I think about this, this sort of trifecta of being grounded in, in a meaningful life, being grounded in a relationship with Jesus, and then being grounded in community, what it says to me is that this, these are ways, these are ways that mindsets that students can ground themselves. And this will be my fourth point, my fourth talk, so that they can build resilience. Because here's the deal. Life is not going to get easier for these young adults. Amen? Life does not get easier. In fact, we, we all say these kind of things like, well, as soon as this thing happens, as soon as we get here, as soon as we always say these kinds of things. But ultimately, friends, we know, like those of us who've been doing the adulting thing for a while, life just keeps asking more of you. And maybe the number one reason why we need to build build and ground our lives in these ideas that matter so that we might have resilience and endurance for the life we've been called to live. We all hope that um, our lives sort of go forward with no issues, no complications, and yet we all know that there are things that happen in our lives that we never predicted. I mean, nobody predicted COVID, right? Like nobody saw, at least nobody on the ground saw COVID doing what it's done and being so disruptive. And yet, the thing that I think the world needs from the church is not a group of people who've st like pulled back, but a group of people who said, all right, in the midst of COVID, we're gonna lean into who we've been called to be. And friends, in order to lean in to that, you've gotta be grounded. You've gotta have some deep roots, particularly in the love of God for your own life, the love of God that comes to us through Jesus and the love of God that's experienced in community. There's um, a guy named David Kinnaman. He's actually the uh, head of the Barna organization. And uh, his wife, Jill, has been given a terminal brain cancer diagnosis. And so they've been sort of navigating this and, and he's been kind of talking publicly about just their journey, particularly of watching his wife um, so, sort of lose parts of herself because of this condition. And he did a blog post a couple weeks ago that I just thought was incredible. And I wanted to share it with you uh, this morning because I thought it was really good. He was talking about how his family was building resilience in the midst of navigating this journey of Jill's diagnosis. And here's how he defined resilience. It's finding deep and unexpected reservoirs of strength, even and especially when life throws its absolute worst at you finding deep and unexpected reservoirs of strength, even and especially when life throws its absolute worst at you. Friends, this is what we want to build into our students, right? This is what we want to see our young adults be able to have. Resilience, so as, as things happen, as life happens, as, as family and finances and this world and the, the racial unrest, whether it goes away or not, and political polarization, whether it goes away or not, or whether the vaccine's really going to do everything that we think it's supposed to do, that our young adults are so grounded in the love of God so grounded in personal meaning, so grounded in their relationship with Jesus, and so grounded in the community of faith that they are able to stand and withstand anything that life throws at them. So this is my hope for the Grounded series. These are the things that I'm gonna talk about and sort of, sort of encapsulate sort of the entirety of our work, our ministry. We are always trying to look our students in the, in the face and say, you matter. You are valued. Your life has meaning. We are constantly looking for ways to invite students into a deeper relationship with Jesus, whether they were raised in the church or they're new to Christianity. 
And we're always trying to create community around them and not just friends, not just pastors, but a multiplicity of relationships so that they might be rooted and grounded in community that will love them, that will champion them, that will push them on. And, and so I do ask you this question. Are you rooted and grounded in love? Are you rooted and grounded in the love that God has for you? I'm talking to you, Mandarin. I'm talking to you, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 something, 30 something. I'm talking to you. Are you rooted and grounded in an ever deepening relationship with Jesus? Are you grounded in community? It's important that you be grounded. And I know that your pastors and your leaders are praying that you would be grounded because the world needs people. The world needs a church that is grounded and resilient and ready for whatever life throws at us because the world really is waiting for us to take our place. And so friends, yes, my prayer is that my college students will be rooted and grounded in love the love that God has for them, the love that's waiting for them in an ever-evolving relationship with Jesus, and the love that is waiting for them in the community of faith so that they might be resilient. I'm definitely praying that for them, but I'm praying it for you, that you would look and think about your life. Are you growing deep roots? Are you leaning into mindsets that will build resilience and endurance in you for the sake of the world that needs us? That's my prayer for you, friends, that you would be rooted and grounded in love, God's love. In Jesus' name, amen.
Now may you go forth in grace and peace and hope and love. Amen. Da 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 da